I'm Dave Ramsey with Trap, and I'd like to take just a minute to talk to you about how we put threads on 3D printed parts. So let's talk about three options for putting threads on 3D printed parts. Uh, the first option would be to actually print the threads. And you can see I've got a small block here that I printed. I kind of printed the threads in both vertical and horizontal orientations. Uh, so you can see how those look. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. Uh, we also have what's known as heat set inserts that are threaded inserts that are heat set into the part, right? So we melt them into the part. These provide the strongest threads that we can get. However, right, you need a part that's big enough to accommodate a thread, and there is a weight penalty that comes with that. So then the third option would be just to simply drill and tap uh, the parts that I have. So let's take a look at my design and kind of where the need comes in. Uh, I've always been a fan of birds. I've always been fascinated by how they fly. And as such, throughout the years, I've owned and built and flown several radio-controlled models of birds known as RC ornithopters. Since it came up that we're going to be dealing with uh, threaded parts, I thought it was pertinent to talk about some of the ways we go about that. So let's take a look at my design and where the need comes in. So as we dive into this design, you can see I've already got the, the basic framework laid out. I've got my flap mechanism in, I've got my drive motor in, but what I needed to focus on was a way to sort of retain these onto the model, because as this thing is flapping, right, stuff's gonna wanna move around. So you can see that I've got a uh, retaining brace that I have built for it uh, that kind of goes along the, the frame rails here. And what I wanna do is I wanna come in uh, and actually thread those holes so that I can put a tiny set screw in there. So I want to be able to take this thing apart at some point. Let's talk about those different ways again. Let's take a closer look at that 3D printed block. Uh, as you can see here, here's that block in a little closer detail. I've got an M2 thread that you see me pointing out here, and then right beside it an M20 thread. And I had to go up to M20 really to get any resolution out of it. You can see with the M2, it was, you know, it's basically washed out. It tried to put a thread, but, but not a very good one. On the M20, you can see we actually, at that halfway point, get a pretty decent thread profile, right? You can see it's laying down a layer of material uh, consistently along that thread, at least at that halfway point. But as we start to move around that radius, the portion that we're printing changes. And so now our profile changes. You can see our, our thread actually changes as well. So we have pretty poor consistency here when it comes to strength of thread. Now, if we switch over to the vertical orientation, you can see M2 didn't print at all. Again, M2 is a little small for what we can print. But with M20, you can see with the vertical orientation, we actually do get a better thread out of it. You can see we actually get some, some thickness to it uh, and there's some good consistency there. So we also have what's known as heat set inserts. Now, if you're interested in knowing more about heat set inserts, we actually have a tech tip video we can point you to as well. Uh, but essentially, right, they're, they're basically melted into the part. And in this case, that was an M8 insert that was added there. Now, what's cool about GrabCAD Print, when we go to add these in, uh, we can actually accommodate those heat certs in GrabCAD Print. You'll notice as I have my uh, faces selected, if I come in, I can choose to, you know, to actually put that insert into that part. And when I choose the top insert I want, uh, you can see there's heat melt, there's helical, and then a custom, it's gonna automatically size the hole based on the insert that I choose so that right when we go to melt this in, we don't have any extra slop or clearance in. Now, in my case, I'm gonna end up drilling and tapping these because I want the lightest weight option possible. So what GrabCAD also gives me the ability to do is to design my holes so that they don't need support. So I can actually change the shape of those so that they are a self-supporting feature. And in this case, you can see these three holes that I have in the part, as I choose to make them self-supporting, you can see it adds that diamond shape in. So this has a couple benefits. One is now my horizontal holes are not gonna be filled with support material, right? So that's less post-processing time, less cleanup time I'm gonna to have to do on the part. And being that that shape it's putting in is a diamond shape, that means it's self-centering. So when I go to drill this out, I know that my bit is gonna run true to the hole. So with that being the case, let's take a look at the retainer brace that I printed. Let's look at getting this thing tapped and then adding our small set screw here. Uh, in this case, this was a, um, an ABS part and it's a fairly small part as you can see. So I'm actually able to run the tap by hand in this case. If I needed to, I could have got a tool on the backside of that, but 
Um, I'm pretty well bottomed out at that point. You can see that I'm starting to back it out now. You can start to see the material get removed a little bit on the tap there. Now, if everything works out right, uh, then I should be able to, to thread my set screw uh, right into that hole. And let's see if that works out. That looks like a win to me, set screw installed. So ultimately I now have my small parts. They now have threads in them. So let's see the end result of that. I started a, a, a brief assembly here and you can see I've got my set screws into my retaining brace. And um, if I turn this on, you can see now I have a nice little working flat mechanism. So, pretty cool. Thank you for joining me for this. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to hit us up at trimac.com. Mm -hmm.